Hello and welcome to a video on geometry brought to you by the Answer Series. In this video we will start looking at proportionality. Read the question carefully. You will notice you have a rectangle and you have been given parallel lines. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this example yourself and then we will do it together. Question 1.1 asks you to explain why FC is parallel to GH. It's only worth one mark, so I need to be able to do it fairly quickly. You know that ABCD is a rectangle. What do you know about the opposite sides of a rectangle? You know that they are parallel. So I can say that FC is parallel to AB because of my rectangle, but I know that AB is parallel to GH because they gave me that. So therefore FC is parallel to GH. The second question asks me to calculate the length of DM. If I look at where DM is on the diagram, DM is part of the diagonal of the rectangle. I know in a rectangle that the diagonals bisect each other. So DM is half of DB. I also know in a rectangle that the diagonals are equal. So DB is equal to AC. I've got this parallel line, so I'm going to work in triangle AGH and I'm going to use ratio and proportion. And I can say that AC over CH is equal to AF over FG. Because of my proportion theorem, with FC being parallel to GH. Substitute the values they've given you, and you can solve for AC. AC is the diagonal of the rectangle. So is DB. So if AC is 28, then DB is also 28. DM is half the diagonal because the diagonals bisect each other. So DM is 14 units. Example number two. I want you to have a look again at the words. You've got the word bisect. You've got a tangent. You've got a parallel line. So what you need to do is you need to think carefully in this one. Look at your checklist. What do I need to find? Where is it on the sketch? What do I know that could be helpful? And can I justify my answer? They've told you there are parallel lines. So look for alternate angles, corresponding angles, co-interior angles. And look to see if you can use the ratio and proportion theorem. They've given you a tangent. Do you have a radius that will be perpendicular to it? Do you have two tangents? Or do you make use of the tan chord theorem? What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video, I want you to try this question, and then we will do it together. Question 2.1. The first angle they want you to calculate is angle N2. You will notice that you have alternate angles. Angle P1 and angle N2 are equal to each other. So angle N2 is X, because of alternate angles, and don't forget to put the parallel lines down. The second one they ask you for is angle Q2. Angle P1 is X. It's an angle between a tangent and a chord. So you go from either side of the chord up to the circumference. So angle P1 is equal to angle Q2 because of the tan chord theorem. Angle P1 is X, so that means that angle Q2 is X because of tan chord theorem.
In the next question, they ask you to prove that Mn over Nr is equal to Ms over Sq. Mark the sides on the sketch. So Mn, Nr, Ms, Sq. Now, that's not in a triangle. I do have a triangle with a parallel line, but that would involve SP and not SQ. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and prove that SP and SQ are equal. In triangle MPR, use the ratio and proportion theorem, and you can say MN over NR is equal to MS over SP because of the proportion theorem. And notice your parallel lines in that triangle. It's SN parallel to PR. So you must use the parallel lines that are in the triangle you're working in. I'm then going to start with my X's. I've got that P1 is X already. I've proved that N2 is X because of alternate angles. I proved that Q2 is X because of the tan chord theorem. What have they given me that I haven't used? Well, I haven't used the fact that QN bisects angle N. So that means that N1 and N2 are equal. So I've now got that N1 is equal to X. I then have angle MNQ and angle MPQ. Q are angles in the same segment. So if angle N1 is X, then angle P3 is going to be X. So angle P3 is X because of angles in the same segment. And you will now notice that you have angle P3 and angle Q2 both equal to x. And it is critically important that you say which are the angles you're going to be working with. You've got a number of x's on this diagram. Which are the angles that are going to give you the equal sides? It's angle P3 and angle Q2. So you must write down those are the two angles. Because these two angles are equal, it means that SQ and SP are equal because of sides opposite equal angles. I've got my ratio. All I do now is in place of SP, I put SQ. And I've proved what I was asked to prove. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.